Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you screen sets or the Windows screen sets in Reaper. Now, to get to our screen sets, we'll go to the View menu right over here, and we'll choose Screen Sets or Layouts. We could also use the keystroke Control E on the PC or Command E on the Mac. And we could toggle it open with that keystroke. Close it or open. Now there's two different types of screen sets. There's the Windows ones and the track views. And the biggest difference between them is that the Windows screen sets are global. They're based on your system. So anything we do in this window is gonna work on any project on your computer. Whereas the track views only work on the project that you're working on at the time. So they're not global, where the Windows ones are. Now there's 10 screen sets we can use, one through 10. And you already have keystrokes to trigger them for the first three, F7 through F9, and we can add in shift to save them with the same keystroke. But we can customize it to use all 10 if we want. Go to Edit Shortcuts. It opens up our action list where we can customize what keystrokes trigger what screen sets. But I'm gonna leave these for now. And let's start by creating one. We'll go to number one and we'll hit Save. And that opens up this dialog where we can give it a name and we could choose what's saved in terms of which parameters. For now, we're gonna choose all the parameters, but I'll separate them in a bit. So let's name this default. So this will be our default screen set that we can go back to at any point. Hit save, and we have it saved right there. To recall it, we can hit load, or we can just double click it. But now let's create another one so you can see the difference. Let's say, for instance, you want to open the mixer. Go to View, choose the mixer, and the mixer's right here. We could change the size of it. Let's make it a bit smaller. Let's say we wanted to save our screen just like this. We could go to Screen Set 2, hit Save, and let's name that mixer. Save it. Now we could double click this one to go back to the default. Double click this one to go to our mixer. And all the windows are sized exactly how we saved them. So let's say we wanted to put the mixer at the bottom of our screen. We could right click right here, dock the mixer in the docker, and now it's down at the bottom. We could resize it at a size that works for us. Let's say right about here. And then we could save that as a screen set as well. Hit save, we'll name it mixer at the bottom. And now we have three screen sets, our default, our mixer, and the mixer at the bottom, which looks exactly how we saved it. Let's create one more. Let's say we wanted to put this mixer on the left side. We could pull the tab right from here and drag it over to the left side. And let's make it smaller so we just see one fader. This way we can scroll one track at a time and always have one fader that we can grab. Let's say we wanted to change how big this is. Let's make this a little smaller like this. We want to save that with the screen set. Go to number four, save it. We'll name it one fader left. And now that screen set is saved as well. So we have the default, our mixer, mixer at bottom, and the one fader on the left. And notice the size of this right here changed with the screen set. It was this big before, and now it's nice and small. So everything we adjust is saved in that screen set. And like I said earlier, this is global. So this is gonna work in any project that you're working on, not just this one. Which is why if we scroll to the top and change it, it doesn't change the scrolling. We're still looking at these tracks. Or if we go down here, change to the mixer, we're still seeing the same tracks we did before because that stuff's not saved. 
at least not in the Windows screen tips. Now we could also change our layouts. Let's go back to the default. Let's go to the options menu. And let's go to our layouts. For the track control panel, right now it's set to large. We could change it to small full meter. And that's going to change the layout so we see these big meters. So we play our track. We can see the meters really big. And we can save that layout as a new screen set. Let's go to number five and let's save it to big meters. And again, we can go back to our default. It goes back to the default layout. Big meters or the default. And if we change to a mixer, the layout goes back to where we saved it when we saved this screen set. Let's also change the layout for the mixer. Let's make this a bit bigger. In fact, let's just change this. Let's put this on the side like this. And let's resave the mixer layout. Just click it, hit save again, and it's going to overwrite what we had there before. Save it, go back to our default, go back to our mixer, and it's saved the way we just saved it. So now let's change the layout just for the mixer. Go to Options, Layouts, the Mixer panel, and change it from Session Mixer. Let's change this to Meters. So now we're going to see big meters in the mixer. Very handy. So we could save that as well. Go to our next one, save it, big mixer meters. And now those are saved. Our default, the big meters over here, and the mixer meters over here, and our regular mixer over here. So that's a lot quicker than changing them manually each time. Let's add one more. Let's go back to our default. Another window I use a lot is the Media Explorer. If I want to bring in a lot of media, like audio. So instead of going up here and choosing the Media Explorer, Let's dock this and let's put it to the left. So I can bring in audio very quickly right from over here. Just drag it in or double click it. So instead of opening it each time, I can save this window as a screen set. Let's go to seven, save it as Media Explorer. And again, back to the default. I want to open the Explorer. Just double click over here. I'll use the keystroke if I set one up, and it opens up that easily. And just close it whenever we're not using it. So let's try resaving a few other things. Let's go back to our mixer. And let's say we wanted to open our big clock. And let's put it down over here. And let's also open up an extra toolbar. If I right click over here, open toolbar, I could choose an automation toolbar. One that I customized. So now this is going to be saved with any screen set that I do. So let's resave it as the mixer one. Choose it, hit save, and resave it. So now if I go back to the default, we'll go back to that mixer. It saves that toolbar and the big clock, at least where I put it. If I move it over here and resave it, Open this one up, back to this one. It puts the clock where I left it when we saved it. As I mentioned earlier, we don't have to save everything. Let's say we wanted to change just the layout for the mixer, but not change everything else. Let's hide this and this. And let's go to the options, the mixer panel to the red fader. And that's going to change the faders to be red. So now if we save this as number eight, it's going to save everything, unless we do this. Hit save and deselect all the things we don't need and just choose the layouts. We'll name it Red Faders. And now it's just going to save the layout. So if I go back to the default, go back to the mixer and choose the Red Faders, just the faders change. Everything else stayed the same. So let's go to the one fader left 
and see the fader is silver. Now, if I choose the red faders, the only thing that's going to change is the color of that fader or that layout. Everything else we're seeing is going to stay the same because we only saved the layout parameter. So double click this one, change the color of that fader. Let's do the same thing with the mixer at the bottom. Choose it here, choose the red faders. Now the red faders are at the bottom. So we could use that for any of the parameters. Let's change it so the blue faders, and let's just save that. Again, just this parameter. And again, this is going to work with any of the parameters. The main window position, the tool window position, the docker selected tab, and the mix of flags. But we're just using layouts right now. So save that, go to red faders, blue faders, the regular mixer, change the color of the faders right from here. And the same with one fader left, red faders or blue faders. So just the parameters we choose when we save it are actually going to change, which makes it very powerful as we don't have to save everything in each screen set. There's one other thing I should mention. Down over here is an option to auto save when switching screen sets. For instance, the way it's set up right now with it not selected, if I go to the default, then go to the mixer, and let's say I wanted to close the big clock. If I go back to the default without saving it, if I come back to the mixer, the clock is back here, which is okay if that's what you want. But if you want to make changes and have them be saved automatically without having to resave them each time, we could just choose this right here. So we can close this clock and the toolbar docker. And because we use the mixer right now, if we switch to this and then back, they're still closed, even though we didn't save them because they auto saved when we jumped to another one. So let's go back to this one and let's add the routing matrix. So even if I don't save this with this selected, if I go to the mixer and then go back, it's still there. So it auto saves it as we jump to a different screen set, which is a great time saver if you're constantly moving things around and you want them to stay like that as you jump to the next screen set. Or if you don't want that behavior, just turn it off. So that's pretty much it. That's the screen sets, at least the Windows screen sets in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!